Good morning. I'm Jeff Berman, U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Today we announce criminal charges against this man, Lawrence Ray, who for nearly a decade exploited and abused young women and men emotionally, physically, and sexually for his own financial gain. As alleged, the indictment that we unsealed earlier today, Ray ensnared many of his victims while they were teenagers, a time of particular vulnerability for the young people he preyed on. Ray's first victims were sophomores at a college in Westchester County, girls and boys young enough to be his children. In fact, his initial victims were his daughter's college roommates. Ray used physical, psychological, and sexual abuse to make his victims confess to alleged wrongdoing and then agreed to make substantial payments to Ray, payments that these young students did not actually owe and could not possibly afford. So Ray directed his victims to obtain money for him by other means, by draining their parents' savings and worse, forced labor and prostitution. In total, over nearly a decade, Ray coerced and extorted nearly $1 million in payments from five different victims. As alleged in the indictment, at the core of Ray's criminal conduct was his ability to psychologically control his young victims, most of whom were in college when the scheme began. Ray initially befriended his victims, moving into their on-campus housing before encouraging them the summer after their sophomore year to move in with him to a Manhattan apartment, which many of them did. Under the pretense of counseling the victims, Ray inquired about intimate aspects of their lives and mental health, managing to convince several of them that they were broken and that only Ray could fix them. Ray also sought to alienate these college students from their parents, fueling their dependence on him. After gaining his victims' trust, Ray turned on them, falsely accusing them of harming him by attempting to poison him or to deliberately damage his property. Ray then subjected his victims to grueling psychologically and physically abusive interrogations to force them to, to, to confess to his baseless allegations. During these interrogations, which spanned hours and involved sleep and food deprivation, Ray subjected his victims to almost unspeakable abuse. As alleged, Ray put a knife to one male victim's throat, brandished a knife and threatened to dismember another male victim, grabbed a third male victim around the neck until he passed out, slapped the female victim, and grabbed another female victim by her head before shoving her to the ground. After enduring Ray's abuse, at least seven of his victims falsely confessed to having harmed or attempted to harm Ray. Ray, who sometimes recorded these false confessions, then used these false confessions to extort money from his victims. Some victims drained hundreds of thousands of dollars from their parents' savings accounts at Ray's direction. Others opened lines of credit or solicited contributions from acquaintances. As alleged, Ray used fear, violence, and coercion to induce one young victim to engage in commercial sex acts to repay debts she did not actually owe. That victim at Ray's direction worked as a prostitute for more than four years while giving Ray substantially all of the proceeds from her forced prostitution. Beginning when she was just a college student, Ray sexually groomed this victim, collecting sexually explicit photographs and other personal information he then used to coerce her into engaging in commercial sex acts. Ray also used physical violence. On one occasion, as alleged, Ray tied this victim to a chair placed a plastic bag over her head and almost suffocated her. In total, Ray collected over $500,000 from this victim as proceeds of her forced prostitution. In addition, Ray used psychological and physical abuse, including food and sleep deprivation and violence against three female victims in order to force them to perform extensive physical labor on a family member's property in North Carolina, sometimes forcing, forcing them to work in the middle of the night, all for no pay. For his conduct, Ray has been charged with nine counts, including sex trafficking, extortion, 
forced labor, and money laundering. Ray was arrested this morning, and he will be presented later before a magistrate judge. When he was arrested, one of his daughter's roommates and one of the female victims in the indictment were in the residence at the time. For so many of us and our children, college is supposed to be a time of self-discovery and newfound independence, a chance to explore and learn all within the safety of a college community. But as alleged, the defendant exploited that vulnerable time in these victims' lives through a course of conduct that shocks the conscience. Protecting our community from those who prey on children and vulnerable young adults has been and remains a priority for our office, and we will continue to do everything we can to seek justice for raised victims. Now, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the prosecutors in our office who have been working on this case. To my right is Danielle Sassoon, Lindsay Keenan, and the co-chiefs of the violent and organized crime squads, Lauren Potter and Michael Gerber. And we can't do these cases alone. We rely on the partnership of our federal agencies. And uh, to my left uh, is the FBI representatives who are partners in this case in so many of our important cases, and I want to thank them as well. Uh, Bill Sweeney, who is the, to my left, the assistant director in charge of the FBI's New York office, and Jackie McGuire, who is the agent in charge of the Criminal Division. I want to thank them very much. Now I'd like to welcome to the podium Bill Sweeney. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning, everybody. Uh, to my left is Jackie McGuire, who's the agent in charge of our Criminal Division, and to her left is Kevin Ponder, who is the acting head of our violent crime branch. Around 2010, a college in Westchester County, New York, a group of sophomore students welcomed a new roommate to their on-campus dorm. The roommate was Lawrence Ray, and the arrangement was anything but traditional. Ray, the father of one of the students, made himself at home among the group of teens and young adults. Their living arrangements shifted over time from the college campus in Westchester to an apartment on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, then on to Pinehurst, North Carolina, and elsewhere. Soon after joining the group, Ray, as we alleged, started therapy sessions with the students to address what he claimed to be their psychological problems. It was here that he laid the groundwork for psychological conditioning that would eventually lead these young adults to become unwitting victims of sexual exploitation, verbal and physical abuse, extortion, forced labor, and prostitution. As alleged for the better part of the last 10 years, Ray has continued to mentally and physically torture his victims. There was no limit to the abuse that Ray's victims received, and there's no knowing the amount of damage he may have caused them in the years to come. For the victims of human trafficking, I'm not entirely sure justice ever served is easily defined. Ray was arrested earlier this morning. He faces a maximum sentence of life in prison. Our investigation is still ongoing, and our work does not stop with an arrest. If you're a victim of Lawrence Ray, or if you have additional information related to the charges announced today, we're asking you to call us at 1-800-CALL-FBI. In the eyes of the FBI, the victim always comes first. There is no excuse for the kind of behavior alleged here, and society as a whole should loudly reject it. Jeff, many thanks to you and your team. Exceptional work in this and many other investigations. I also want to extend my sincere thanks to the entire task force, the FBI, NYPD, Child Exploitation and Human Trafficking Task Force, specifically FBI Special Agent Kelly McGuire from our office. The public needs to know that to be on this task force, you need to volunteer. The work they do on behalf of victims is one of the most noble missions that we engage in. I don't think people appreciate that, and I wanted to thank Dermot in particular for the amount of detectives that he assigns to this task force. There's a lot of work to do out there, and we're eternally grateful for the partnership. Thank you. Okay, we'll take your questions. Yes. Uh, we have no comment with respect to the college. Well, the indictment charges crimes from 2010 to 2018, and that's what's uh, currently charged. 
in the, uh, in the indictment. Our, our investigation was prompted by a magazine article that was published in April of 2019. There could be additional victims out there, and we're urging those victims to call 1-800-CALL-FBI. And we've, uh, we really are, uh, encourage all potential victims of Ray to come forward. Yes. I don't know if I have a uh, reaction about his past behavior. The conduct of last year is outrageous. Uh, makes you angry. If you're not angry, you don't have a soul. Um, we'll figure out everything from there, and we just encourage victims to call in. Well, the indictment uh, alleges that there was no basis for any of his claims of damage, of poisoning, of damage to property. And with respect to your uh, other question, I have no comment. I'm not going to comment any further than Jeff. <clears throat> I'm sorry? Yes, as I said, when he was arrested at the residence, he was with one of the victims identified in the indictment and one of his daughter's college roommates. No, it was in New Jersey. It was victim two. Well, uh, over $200,000 was drained from uh, the victim's parents' savings account at Ray's direction, and over $500,000 were the proceeds of forced prostitution. I can't comment any further on that. Thank you very much.